It's a dinner date with destiny for Mary Jane and Peter Parker. Will this event end up changing their lives forever? Well, let's hop into the pages of Ultimate Spider-Man issue number four and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join this newest issue, it seems that Peter and Mary Jane are out on the town, which is rare for them because ever since they had kids, they don't exactly get out as much as they used to. Normally, they wouldn't even be able to set foot in a restaurant as exclusive and hoity-toity as this, but thankfully, Peter has someone opening doors for him in the form of Harry Osborn. Yes, that's right, everyone. In the last issue, Spider-Man had discovered that it was actually Harry acting as the vigilante known as the Green Goblin. They had gotten a drink after that, and it seems that in the time jump, they've become thick as thieves. Harry actually has a great little line where he says that, oh yeah, only the worst people eat at this restaurant. It's so snobby and elitist. Yes, I'm here every week. What of it? Now, this meeting is also very important, too, because it's not just a chance for Mary Jane to meet Harry, but also for people Peter and Mary Jane to actually meet Harry's wife for the very first time, and who is she? Well, she's a very familiar face, that's right everyone, in this new Ultimate Hickman universe. Harry Osborn ended up marrying the very much still alive Gwen Stacy. Man, it doesn't matter what universe she's involved in, somehow one way or another it always comes back to goblins with her. Now, what exactly did Gwen Stacy do in a universe where her life wasn't tragically cut short? Well, it seems that she's become a major power player in the business world all her own. In fact, according to Harry at dinner, she's actually a billionaire by her own hand, which is really damn impressive. And hey, speaking of jobs, it's during the dinner conversation the topic eventually shifts over to what Mary Jane does in this world, and you're gonna be surprised. It would seem that she's actually in marketing, and it makes a lot of sense. This Mary Jane, much like the one in the 616 universe, started as a model. However, unlike that version of the character, this M MJ, was extra proactive. She really took control of her own image, did all of her own marketing, and in fact, she did such a good job, eventually she started getting paid by other people to do it. It wasn't long before she got snatched up by one of the bigger companies and got her own corner office, big salary, and everything else. The only problem was is that Mary Jane didn't like compromising her morals. Usually when she was asked to turn around the fortunes of some sort of evil person or a corporation who was in the middle of crisis, crisis management, including, get this, formerly Norman Osborn and the old Oscorp. That's why recently Mary Jane has decided to strike out on her own and start her own marketing company, and she already has one of her first brand new clients in Ben and Jonah's brand new news endeavor. Hell, in fact, it was actually Mary Jane who gave the two old guys a name finally for their business, and what did she decide to call it? Well, the paper, of course. Ben, who we see is actually babysitting the Parker children thought that it was a really great idea. Very salt of the earth. Very easy on the tongue. What are you reading? Well, the paper, of course. Where do you get the news? The paper, naturally. Jonah, on the other hand, has to be a stick in the mud about the whole thing, saying we're not making a paper anymore. We're a website. <laughs> it's also here, too, we realize that the Parker children, especially the daughter, aren't exactly a big fan of Jonah, which I find absolutely hilarious. Gwen, we learn, is actually a really big fan of the paper. She likes the idea of these two two old news hounds using their connections and convictions to dig deeper into stories that would normally end up getting swept under the rug by the powers that be. It's even Gwen who says that this brand new operation could use a great photographer, say someone like Peter who's been doing amazing work, capturing that spider vigilante who keeps swinging around the city. Of course, Peter says that he still works for the Bugle, but that that could always change. The subject then changes to Spider-Man himself. Yet again, Gwen actually is is a fan saying that this guy is filling a need out there, and that people have been crying out for something like this for a very long time. Harry, on the other hand, transversely doesn't much care about the news. In fact, he seems to find the whole thing depressing. Which is hilarious, because as we've learned in the last couple issues, the Bugle is actually a big booster of the Green Goblin while they're actively demonizing Spider-Man. The hits just keep on coming, too, when Mary, Jane, and Gwen decide to go to the ladies' room. It's here we discover that Oscorp were actually the ones who ended up absorbing everything that was left behind from the now defunct Stark Stain Corporation. Ah, that explains why the Green Goblin was able to manipulate Spider-Man's suit. Gwen also says that the company just has way too much money sitting around right now and they've already exhausted all the regular charities so she thinks that maybe it might be a good idea if the Parkers are okay with it. Her and Harry want to invest in this brand new The 
paper project. Yes, because it would seem both Harry and Gwen have a real invested interest in trying to save the world, and when the boys are left alone, Harry actually ends up dropping a major bombshell that Gwen is very much aware of everything he's been doing as the Green Goblin, and Harry is actually surprised that Peter hasn't come clean to MJ about everything, though Peter is ultimately forced to admit that his daughter did catch him. Peter says that he always planned to tell MJ, but at the same time, he feels that not knowing might actually serve her better in terms of protection, Harry fires back by saying that if Peter is strong enough to put on a costume and go out into the night to fight crime, then he should certainly be strong enough to tell his wife the whole truth and nothing but the truth. After all, unlike Harry, who had to build his powers, Peter actually has innate super abilities, and with that great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, how about that? In this new universe, it's actually Harry who says that and not Uncle Ben. As the night comes to an end, Peter and MJ end up walking home and talking about their evil evening, MJ admits that she likes the Osbournes, they're nice, but they're also really scary and really intense. Peter asks MJ if she agrees with what the Osbournes were saying about the world needing heroes, only for MJ to very slyly respond by saying, why do I need heroes, Peter? I have you. And so that was Ultimate Spider-Man issue number four, everybody, and man, I just cannot say enough nice things about this issue. It really tells you where we're at in this brand new Hickman series, that one of the most exciting, most nail fighting stories. We've seen so far had no actual costumes and no actual fighting. It was just all drama and all characterization, and boy did it hit. I think my biggest takeaway from this issue is feeling, man, isn't it nice to have Mary Jane written like an actual real character again with an internal life, as well as wants and needs outside of what's happening with Spider-Man? It feels good, doesn't it? I know it feels good for me. That means when stuff actually happens later and Mary Jane and Peter's relationship is threatened, or maybe when they find out some revelations about what the Osbournes are up to, it's going to actually be more impactful because Mary Jane is, you know, a real person. This new version of Gwen is really great, too. I thought we'd have to wait way longer to see what was actually going on with her in this brand new universe, but here it is, and it makes a lot of sense where she ended up in life. Hell, the big implication is, is that she's actually more involved in what's happening at Oscorp right now, as they have just so happened to absorb the old Stark state. She was almost late for the dinner, too, because she was taking a big, important meeting. I have to wonder, was that meeting with Captain Britain, is she trying to become the new Stark leader of this brand new American colony? And if so, does Harry even know? There's just so many great story avenues they could take here, and I'm so excited to see where they go from here. Overall, I'd give this one a very positive 9 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Julgan, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and, you know, help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw. So I want to thank you all and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.